Right. Lecture B. Today we have a busy schedule. Uh, we are going to have uh, invited speakers from uh, two different places. One is from a private sector, a startup uh, on precision agriculture. Um, so it's uh, very impressive. I want to learn more. And Carl, Dr. Carl Wan, he will be speaking at 11:30. And uh, we have uh, Dr. Ari. Uh, Ali Riza, um, Pura Riza, he will be here at uh, 10.30. So between now and 10.30, I'm going to cover uh, two parts, okay? The one is uh, on payload, okay? One is on payload. Okay, so... So after today's lecture, next week we'll only have three hours lecture left, then done. So you are going to focus on your final projects, okay? So um, having something very interesting, hopefully you can leverage uh, what Kara presented in, on Monday that you can use the incubator. Go ahead. So the grading is behind a lot, way behind. Okay, I'm I'm going to push Doctor, uh, uh, not Doctor, uh, Bo, a lot uh, today, and he I think he's busy with the new baby. All right. So, but I'm going to add another person to help. Okay. Yeah, I know it's very condensed, and it's one after another, and he's developing new labs also for you, and so it's behind. So give a little bit more patience, okay? All right. <laughs> no, no, everything must finish before June 30s. That's for sure. Yeah, that must, must finish, must finish. So there is a dedicated handbook uh, called the UAV Handbook. Uh, there is also a dedicated uh, chapter on payload integration, payload design those framework. So it's a pretty nice 20 pages and uh, the authors, I think the half of the authors, I, I know or I know them. I met them in person and at the personal level. So I put that chapter PDF on the folder as well. Okay, so please take a look. So this is talking about payload and sensor integration. Okay, what are the basic principles we need to follow? And I need to give you background uh, so that you understand uh, the payload is so important. So basically, I'm not sure you can see, so the payload is linked to the mission. Without the payload, you cannot do the mission. So well, what is the mission level requirements? And then uh, pre preliminary design budgets. What is uh, power budget? What is uh, weight budget? And volume allocation, all these things you must consider. Okay, and uh, subsystem design, uh, there are four. One is communication subsystem for the sense payload. The payload need to communicate. And the single board, onboard computer subsystems. And EO stands for electro-optical sensor subsystem and power subsystem. So, so other considerations. So let me, so this is uh, the contents of that book chapter. Uh, led by uh, Professor Daniel Pack. Uh, I know uh, uh, Raj Sharma uh, very well, and uh, he's the person who took my position left over in the Utah State. So everybody is connected. That's great. So, um, <clears throat> so big picture is here. We have uh, uh, air vehicle, and uh, you navig have navigation, communication, and payloads. So that uh, payloads are very important. So you have seen this picture before. So this is some um, abstract setting. In, in the detailed system for uh, the Ag Air UAV system we developed in Utah State, so those electro-optical imagers 
uh, how they are connected. So you have a you have a ground system, you have airborne system, and this circle is the payload. Okay, the payload. So you have an overview of this one. You now can appreciate. So on the sensor parts uh, on the UAV, uh, the sensor is only for uh, navigation. So these are the navigation sensors. Okay, navigation sensors. But we are talking about payloads. Of course, payload is also a sensor, but is not used for a uh, used for the navigation. So uh, I would like to say uh, the payload um, is a separate entity that is linked to the high level uh, mission. Like what you do, what you want to do with the UAV depends on the payload. Okay. So UAS payload. So in general setting, in general setting, the, we, c we can have one or more payload units uh, carried on the UAV at any time. So, uh, so far, the munitions, okay, bombs or guns, uh, will never legally be permitted to be carried on the UAV operating in the U uh, European and the American civil air spaces. So, the purpose of a UAV is actually to deliver or collect data, usually in the dull, dirty, and dangerous 3D, uh, dull, dirty, dangerous environment. So the payload is most important element, they said, is the most important element of the whole UAV system. That determines the payback and the economic and other gains of why you fly the drones. Okay. So the UAV itself, you can, you can fly it nicely. It doesn't make very good sense if we don't have a meaningful payload to do some meaningful missions. Okay. So the UAV itself is simply a platform carry the payload to the best location. So, so in general, this uh, payload for this, like, like this one, you have payloads. These missiles are payloads, okay? And even you have some radar uh, to carry the antenna, okay? It's also payload. Uh, also, you can put a camera. It's a EO, electro optical sensing system, the scanners, okay? An infrared system, okay? Uh, so, now you may ask, hmm, well, what do we should put on the UAV? So then you should check all the sensors. So I did a survey about different types of sensors that potentially uh, can serve as a payload on the UAV to do meaningful missions. Okay. So that, say for example, uh, you, you measure air temperature. Okay. Uh, you do the relative humidity probes. Uh, you have a um, barometric pressure sensor. Okay. So all these are the sensors we, we checked that potentially can be used. And also basic weather conduct conductivity sensors, uh, digital cameras, uh, dissolved oxygen sensors. That's the inside of the water though, dissolved in the oxygen sensors. Um, so you, you do the water drone, you want to check the water uh, physical and parameters. So the potential payloads could be like distance sensors, or uh, tough uh, moisture sensors, and so on and so forth. And here we have uh, current sensors, we have uh, evaporation gauge, and we have uh, uh, freezing rain and ice detection, and GPS, of course, you know GPS. And this is uh, heat, vapor, CO2, flux, PHD sensors, uh, PPH sensors. So, uh, and all weather sensors, uh, and solar solar radiation sensors is this guy, okay? This guy. Okay. So surface temperature sensors, okay? Wind speed, and wind direction sensors. So all these can be uh, used. So so there's a trade-off regarding the range, and also uh, the payload in terms of uh, uh, the. Uh, 
in terms of the weight of the sensors. So if you want to fly, basic message is, if you fly longer, you should carry less payload. <laughs> okay. All right, so. So I'm going, not going to uh, do this uh, uh, elaboration about trade-off between the payload weight versus the range. Okay, this is, I'm going to go a little bit quicker payload and range. And payload constraints, uh, there are many. So especially for the drones to put on the airborne, there's some lots of uh, constraints, okay? So weight, power, communication, okay? And, and also uh, many other uh, factors. So for example, um, you have uh, extreme acceleration. Some of the sensors cannot sustain that. When you launch, their, their, their acceleration is too big, they can damage your sensor, and so on and so forth. So it's actually pretty, uh, uh, pretty uh, challenging. And in fact, I keep asking you, as a final uh, project, having a startup company, so the most important thing is you want to differentiate yourself with all others. So, what can make you stand out? My understanding is probably, most likely, if you have uh, some innovative ideas on a sensor and put that module in the drone and so that you can turn the drone into a, a brand new people never thought about kind of thing, okay? To do the sensing or monitoring or surveillance or scientific uh, measurements and so on and so forth, okay? For example, you, you put a nuclear detector, nuclear radiation detector, so you should be able to check whether the plume and its, uh, con the, the particles contain some radiative materials. Or you heard, anybody of you, uh, any of you heard about this uh, valley fever? Most of you heard of that? Say, uh, when you drive through, then you see a tractor and the tilting the, the, the soil, and you have a um, plume of uh, the dust. Question is uh, whether there are uh, valley fever virus within the dust. Can you answer that question? Do you want to send somebody to sniff? No, you don't. You, you need to send a drone to do that. We had a project on this. So basically, we have a, a vacuum sucking the, so to circulate the wing so that the, the dust will, 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 will be left on some, some of the filter. Then we, we do this uh, lab tests whether we have uh, microbials in there. That makes sense, right? So um, just open your mind. That's why today we leave the payload so to prepare you for your final projects. So. But to do that, we need a general, some general process. So design constraints and the budgeting process. So are you with me? OK. So it's, it's, it's a volume and weight capacity. So we need, so we need to, uh, because of the volume and the weight uh, capacity constraints, so we need to have the following additional constraints derived, like uh, uh, EMI interferences because you want to make it so small and uh, you don't want to put so many protections in there so uh, because they are so close each other so there's a risk to increase about EMI interferences so power limited by the space and the weight available for energy storage devices just batteries you cannot put bigger batteries and payload operation time also limited by the available power and processor speed is also limited by the weight. You can put very strong computers on there. It's too heavy. And like uh, video frame rate cannot be so fast, you know. The resolution could, be, could not be too high so that uh, your uh, camera is too big. So those are the derived constraints. So what's the trade-off? So the constraint of volume and weight is major trade-off for the payload design. So, um, so in, this, in this thing, we also need to consider 
whether you want very automatic mission or you have some human operator involved. So onboard processing versus uh, available con communication bandwidth. So if you pass too much information to the ground control station, then you need lots of communication bandwidth and consume a lot of power. And uh, onboard capability versus flight time. So these all the things must be com considered. So we also need to make it as simple as possible and adaptability versus minimum design, so on and so forth. Uh -huh. So try to fill up uh, your uh, the trade-offs. So I need to back a slide. The additional constraints and trade-offs. Okay, trade-offs. So I'm going to switch to the payload subsystem. So are you done with this slide? Okay, we can leave here for another uh, half minute. So in the next, I'm going to introduce you uh, four parts of the major subsystems for a payload. F so if you, so payload is a subsystem of a drone, right? It's a drone. But if you zoom in, take a payload as, as a system, then it has its own subsystems as well. So what are those subsystems? So first of all, you need communication. Power, you need supply, power supply. You need to communicate, you need to talk to the, C, the, uh, the, the pilots, all the pilots, okay? And sensor itself, and you need some basic embedded computing, so computers, so four parts. Communication, power, sensor, and computers, okay? So are we ready to, uh, to move forward? Okay, so this is already done. Uh, so communication power sensors on the computer itself. So it's not just that you buy a sensor you put on your drone, it's not possible. You need to do the sensor integration, okay? Integration. When you do integration, you need to have its own communication system, power system, and computer system. So, so, um, so the payload design integration method is try to make the e sensor integrated with the whole UAV system so that what? <laughs> we can maximize the performance for the small UAV package, define. So then first, we need to define the mission requirements of the payload. You put the payload integrated with the drones for what? So you only serve that mission. So you don't want to pursue general purpose like uh, consumer grade, a uh, foolproof camera system? No, no, it's not. So then you create a preliminary weight, power, volume, budget for the payload. Start an iterative design of the payload subsystem, constantly interacting among all subsystems, okay? Uh, subsystem designs to ensure the performance is maximized within the system constraints. Then you address other area that can affect the payload design. So these are interconnected, as you can see, right? So payload mission requirements, usually we need to ask the following questions, okay? What is the flight duration required for the mission? What is the specific task of the mission? For example, searching for specific targets, setting up surveillance posts, providing a communication relay, itself is a relay, okay? Uh, so. What are the detailed mission subtasks? How large is the search area? How long will the payload system need to be operated on the ground before the flight? Okay. So you may feel strange why we ask this question, okay? So because sometimes the, the sensor or payload need to be warmed up on ground, then you fly, okay? That warming up is stage is uh, actually be operated on the ground. Okay. What is the maximum distance from the ground station the UAV will be operating? And the payload mission requirements, we need to continue with a lot of questions. So this is the first slide. Next slide is how many UAVs will be in flight? If you have multiple UAVs, then you need to talk about what is your target characteristics, number of targets, target separation, shape, size, color of the targets, all these are considered as the payload mission requirements. 
So continue, the third slide, continue to ask the question about what are the allowed frequencies used for communicating between the UAV and the ground control station, what are the imagery, imagery refresh rate, image quality and size, position mission status and health, so on and so forth. Okay? So all this linked to the mission requirements definition okay? by answering that. So after that, we can do preliminary payload design budget. So that is, uh, we need the WPV, weight power and volume and cost of course. Start the payload sizing, how big and preliminary power budget is very useful uh, because the battery weight is a major weight contributor. Okay, you don't want to use oversized battery. Okay, you just want to use big enough battery to make this mission accomplished. So if I go a little bit quicker, we are going to see a picture. So uh, example of the payload hardware design. Uh, this is a single board computer, SBC, okay. A EO electro optic sensor, SSD solid state disk, and also an uh, uh, external serial advanced technology attachment, the SATA SSD. Uh, so this is a generic, uh, so this is the communication needed to talk to the payload. So this is EO sensor is the sensor. So if I go back a, a few slides, you're going to see this is exactly like this. So this is a detailed example of this picture. The sensor is just not sensor alone. The sensor, computer, and power communication should be together. So if we look at this picture again, compared to that, you will see the sensor is here, communication is here, okay? The computer is here, or what else? Communication, sensor, computer, and power supply. So they didn't put power supply in here. Okay? So communication at two. So then we do budget. There is a detailed budgeting process. So different elements, component, what is the voltage, what is the current, what is the uh, power supply, uh, consumption. So that's uh, power budget. The weight budget, you do the same thing. So you have different components in here. What is the weight? and do a percentage, so then you know which one are the top uh, players in the weight budget. Okay. Then next is the volume allocation, volume allocation. So, um, the meaning the size. Do not cause any electronic uh, interferences to each other. That's a needed separation, okay? Arranged in aircraft center of gravity is also important, okay? So your so subsystem design workflow, okay? So for communication, we have a workflow. For power, we also have a, uh, not workflow, sorry, design flow, okay? So, so uh, there's a detailed explanation of each block in here. I, I don't have time to go through everything here. I'm not sure it is in the quiz, probably not. Uh, payload trade-offs and uh, payload subsystems, preliminary design budget, okay? Design budgets on what? Power, weight, and volume, okay? okay. Um, so this is, this is for communication subsystems, so we can explain each of this block. So the first step is define mission constraints and then uh, you, you have different, uh, so this one has A and B and C. And then you, so this is mission constraints, like showing in this picture, define mission constraints. There's more elaborated discussion. So then step two is define payload constraints on the communication system, okay? Then, and Step three will be a communication link budget. So there are examples of a link budget, like bandwidth requirement, how much image uh, kilobytes per second you need, okay? So these are the details of that example system. So these are the details on the definition. 
uh, example solution, you need to make sure that you have the enough bandwidth to transmit the desired uh, volume of data to the ground control station. Then you define possible radios that you can use. And then step five, so let me go back a slide uh, to this picture. So these are the one, two, three, four, five, six. So this kind of flow chart is called a design flow for this subsystem of the payload. The overall is a payload for each subsystem design there is a design flow. So we just went through this communication flow. Okay, for the details, check that chapter I attached. So, so I'm going to go to the next one. That's computer. What is the design flow to select, how to select that computer for you? So then there's also, uh, the subsystem of the computer, then you need to know that what is the CPU allocation roughly needed for this subsystem. So there's also a design flow. So starting from mission constraints, payload constraints, or single board computer, so performance budget, define the possible options for SBC, a single board computer. So then there are some different conditions, then you can uh, negotiate as new constraints, then you can iterate. So that is a design iteration, okay? So for each of the box, we can elaborate, define mission constraints, define payload constraints, and uh, there are so many. And, and also they ask question about number, like a uh, solution of the GPS EMI should be found. The EMI electromagnetic interference is, is sometimes is the roadblock. So you're just too close to each other. They influence each other electromagnetically. So you need to solve the problem. We used to have this big problem in the beginning. And later on, how we solve it? So we, we find out this uh, aluminum foil in the kitchen helps. You wrap them. OK. Okay, for sensor, and also we have this design flow, design flow. What I'm saying, these are the guidelines that will help you if you really don't have a very good idea, okay? Or if you don't follow this procedure, you can have your options, but it may not be the best options, okay? It's not an optimal design. So again, starting from mission constraints, uh, then talking about the camera as a payload, then there are pan tilt, zoom cameras, different types, then you list them, then, then you try to make trade off to pick up which one is better, okay? So that's how they do this. So I can say the weight will play a very big role in the selection process. So that is different, three types of different cameras. Then uh, possible electro-optical sensors and selection uh, of them and other, cons other considerations, okay? For the power subsystem, also have a design flow. Again, starting from mission constraints, how long you want. And uh, then uh, payload constraints. Then we have other subsystem design verification of the power budget and they use that power budget table. Uh, then you have battery options. So there's a battery trade analysis. You have two types of batteries and uh, cost, uh, cost rechargeable, volume weight, and charge rate as well. So all points to lithium polymer is more effective, okay? but it's more expensive. Then in there, you need the DC-DC converter uh, for this switching power supply. So I'm not sure you understand the working principle of DC-DC converter. Do you? I, I explain a little bit. So it's basically you step up or step down the direct current source, okay? That small block. So uh, we learn voltage divider using op-amps, using a uh, resistor, 
and so on and so forth. That kind of what you divider, okay, what you divider is not the way we want to go. Because when you when you try to do the what you divider, then you have power loss on that you lose power on that resistor, right? So you don't want to lose that. It's just burning into into thermal heat. So it's a waste of the power. You don't use that. So the DC DC converter will be uh, very efficient. Okay, very efficient. Okay, so from that point of view. So this these steps are just many of them. There's another question about payload consideration. Okay, flight time. Okay, and uh, TIR stands for uh, thermal thermal infrared. Okay, thermal infrared. And uh, you other considerations including uh, pay, uh, including vibration isolation. So some of the sensors cannot do that. Uh, EMI isolation, electromagnetic uh, interferences. So I, I said aluminum wrap usually is the cheapest solution for you. And uh, also you need to consider some of the payloads are very high tech. It is protected by the federal government. So, so especially for thermal cameras and some autopilots, even IMUs, inertial measurement units, they are considered as under the ITAR requirements. So international tra traffic in arm regulations. So if you want to, if you want to uh, carry any of these across the border of the United States, you need to apply license, the so-called export control. Okay. So these are the uh, ITAR. You should when you buy something, you feel it's so expensive, so sophisticated. You should add, oh, what is the ITAR requirement for this payload, for this module? At some point, you need to be clear so you don't violate anything. OK, so done. We did a very quick subsystem design flow reviews. And uh, I expect you are going to spend time for each of them. OK, each of them. Each of them. And those design flow in detailed description. OK? So. The reason I want to speed up is yeah, I want to make two hours for our guest speakers. So in the next 15, 20 minutes, I'm going to go through this deck of slides. So This is some topic I believe we started, uh, contributed a lot from our group in, in the past 10 years, okay? Past 10 years. So one of the indicators is we contributed a dedicated chapter in UAV handbook, okay? Chapter uh, 117. My former PhD students and I and my colleague uh, in Utah, we uh, produced uh, interesting chapter about uh, 25 pages 26 pages okay um, so this is to give you an overview of uh, CPS and how the drones will play a role in there it's, it's very interesting so in there we are going to introduce today at least we know what is the cyber physics system and I think you already heard enough from me about remote sensing at the personal level and personal remote sensing, right? Did I uh, tell you the parallel or analogy between personal computing and personal remote sensing? If not, I'll do it next Monday. The thing is, in the 1950s, if you add personal in front of computing, people will laugh at you. So how come my room for uh, building size computer uh, be personal, okay? But today everything, you know, computing happens at the personal level. You can send your email to your heart. Uh, 
actually. So, <laughs> so people can hack in into your heart. So, uh, and so today with the cheap, reliable drones, you can make remote sensing at the personal level, right? At the personal level. So when we make computing at the personal level, what happened? We produce Bill Gates and what Steve Jobs. So today, we are putting person in front of remote sensing. What's going to happen? That's what exactly I'm trying to do to push you guys to become next generation of Bill Gates and Steve Jobs. Did you get it? That's why we invited people from outside to 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 have to uh, make you uh, broaden your. Uh, vision so uh, to see the outside world okay so again we talked about payloads so uh, again i hope you put innovation here that's probably is much easier than you reproduce a drone from the bottom up size redesign the new generation of drone that's probably a lot of people focusing on that but so in fact in this payload is to what get the data Okay, so in fact, beyond that payload, there's another circle in here. It's called mission data mining. Okay, to make sense of those data, to make the additional added value from the data in the big data era. Okay, so from that, I then I, I'm hoping that you you understand the types of payloads. You can do sensing, imaging, you feel, you sense, you measure. But also actuating, like you do seeding, you use the drones to spray, uh, to crop dusting, honking, to scare the birds away. Okay? And people were talking about uh, cl uh, cloud seeding. Is that right? Cloud seeding. To do artificial means of raining, right? So you don't have rain, but you see a dark cloud in there. You, you spray some chemicals inside the clouds, then they start to fall and it start to rain. So make artificial rain, okay? Uh, not artificial, real rain. It's just yeah. using artificial means. That called cloud seeding. Yeah, cloud, cloud seeding, cloud seeding. Um, so some people, talked to me about this possibility to that kind of service. So if you say, oh, do, do you need a rain? You, know, you need a rain. <laughs> they can create a rain for you, raining events. So the payloads could also serve as a communication relay, data mule, uh, wireless charging, backup of power. So you can say, oh, I have a drone flying there and the battery is dying. Can I go there and try to deliver a battery to that drone? Sure, it's interesting. Why not? Okay, so with that, you can broaden your view of payloads. Lots of innovation can happen in payloads. But if you step back a little bit, so you have the drones can serve as, so you can serve as, uh, with different payloads, the drones actually is playing a role in the real world, uh, doing the sensing, doing the actuation, sensing actuation, this kind of interaction with our real world. That's called a cyber physics system, okay? I'll give you a definition later. The first of all, I, 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 I want to convince you that, again, now we can fly, fire and fly, and we are in the new era of personal remote sensing, okay? We are in the Wright Brothers 2.0 age, so if I use an analogy, I told you that uh, we are in the personal remote sensing age. So here in UC Merced, I'm trying to build this synergy between different campuses, different national labs for uh, mainly targeting precision ag and uh, environmental monitoring to have a uh, uh, synergy or consortium on the drones to make a service. So. This is the part linked to the entrepreneurship. And this is more research, okay? More research. 
So in the next few years, you see the drones in the Central Valley like this. So switching gear a little bit, talking about computational. For computational is a good word that can be added almost, all, uh, almost everything in front of almost everything. You see this computational emotion. <laughs> whatever. When you do computation, it means you can exactly model it and predict it. So then we talk about speed uh, controls can be uh, put all after almost everything, okay? So like that, so like that, speed control, data control, yeah. <laughs> aging control, evacuation control, traffic control, congestion control, and so on and so forth. So here is the exact uh, uh, cyber physics systems definition, uh, integration of computing uh, physical dynamic systems where the sensing, decision, com actuation, computing, networking are all mixed together, okay? So I have quite a few examples like this. Uh, smart sniffing and spraying, river basin, and uh, water watch, you have seen this thing, and also the underground mining environments. So I flash you quickly. So, uh, so this is, uh, so you have an exhibition hall, somebody releasing toxic gas, so this plume, and you need uh, robots moving around to sniff where are the boundary of this events, then you have another team of robots can spray and neutralize the, 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 the toxic gas. You need to do the scheduling and the control to tell where to sniff, where to spray, who to sniff, who to spray, you know, everybody need to answer that question. So uh, these uh, are quite interesting. Uh, 15 years ago, we came out with this framework, uh, even still today, uh, this is still a lot of opportunities to do good research. And uh, so for, for the uh, river basin monitoring, so, so these are the rivers, reservoirs, channels. So if you measure and make all the uh, 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 measurements available on, online wirelessly, so you can monitor it. So when you need the water, when you say, oh, I need the water, they open the gate for you, the water will travel seven days for you, then your crops will die already. So how to do the predictive scheduling of your water, okay? So this is a very important question. You need to know where is the water, who needs water in real time, so you can do scheduling. And this is a thread watch linked to this, uh, somebody doing some bad things, CBR terrorism, chemical, biological, radioactive, Terrorism. So then, talking about water watch, we are talking about how to manage the water use in the crops, in the, in the domain of interest. The drone will serve as a flying sensor to measure the soil moisture or the crop health, health status. So you can decide where to irrigate more or less at some different times. And again, this picture has about 12 years age. And uh, we were trying, to, now we are doing exactly this picture in our lab for drone-based precision agriculture. So this is underground mining. You have leak of the CO1, so leaking. So as leaking changes, how you should coordinate the resources, uh, the flow of people, flow of material, flow of air, all those things, and the flow of the toxic gas as well, how to coordinate them, okay? So the common attri as, as, uh, attributes of the CPS is, so you do computational thinking, not doing, uh, not just crunch, crunch, crunk the data, you need to think about it first, have a system level point of view. So dynamic, physical dynamic system and computation are integrated. All these things are mixed, okay? So most important feature is that I have a very bigger close look picture. Things is under control at the bigger picture. And they are spatial, temporal, complex dynamics. They change over time. They also change over space, variable X, Y, Z, okay? 
So what makes measurement so hard? So that's you measure, you need to ask where to measure and when to measure and all that's 35W1H. So you have different types of sensors like uh, boundary can also uh, only measure at the boundary. Say for example, you have a, a pressure vessel. Okay, it's very high temperature, high pressure inside. You cannot drill a hole inside and measure. You can only measure at the boundary. So, so the boundary measurements, point measurement, domain, subdomain measurement, this is filament me measurement. All these things uh, have uh, point-wise zone, domain distributed, the whole domain, also called God's eyes view, and the boundary, filament. So for sensor, you have these five possibilities. Actuator also, uh, uh, so they can move and not movable, so it's uh, uh, two by two by five by five, it's 100 cases, okay? So, uh, but however, if they change, they, they put the sensors actuators on the moving platform, they are uh, on the same platform or not. So uh, this can be also interesting. And uh, so you have two opportunity, uh, two uh, uh, possibilities. Then you have four possibilities regarding information exchange, sensor to sensor, actuator to actuator. So together we can have uh, different types of cases that is called 800 cases. So uh, in fact, we can graduate from here at least 800 PhD students. And I only did like a few, five huh? so far. So lots of examples can justify this. Uh, one of, this is one of 800 cases. This is also one of, uh, one of 800, one of 800. And we can use, uh, furthermore, can consider, um, in, consider um, integer or, or fraction order cases. So, um, so then together we can graduate so many uh, PhD students, okay? So now uh, I'm going to show you a movie uh, about this is a domain of interest. Uh, you have uh, sensors, and you have somebody uh, releasing a toxic gas in here. Diffusion source is a bad guy, and uh, I have a, a mobile sensor uh, actuator to spray it. So you can see I spray, and uh, this is a uh, diffusing, and then so this is a diffuse. Okay, so or you can see there's a, a pest uh, burst in pointing here. So you then you have spraying. So you should, what's the best way to spray them, okay? So for contaminated source. So, so we have to figure out a way how to do this automatically. So then uh, you can say, oh, we can scale up a nine by nine sprayers. You have, so they can know this. And they can do more on, the, on that. So, so what is uh, possible uh, uh, cyber physics systems using drones for our uh, uh, precision agriculture. So you think about this scenarios. So this is, the, you can see all the, all the things are the crops inside here. So we're moving around for what? Chasing leaks, say for example I have a leak, okay? Or I have pests. Or I have some, some soil problems, okay? And so on and so forth. So, so this is regarding optimal remote sensing. So you, you sh your drones should follow the ground process. As the pests move, I know how, where, to, where to spray them. So I also move accordingly. So this is just one scenario, okay? Many other scenarios. So cyber physics system is uh, an important topic, and I believe it's one of our uh, expertise in our lab, okay? And so we have lots of application scenarios, well documented in that book chapter. And uh, so this is lagoon, this is uh, invasive uh, weed management. And we also tag the fish and track the fish. So this is a nano tag to put place inside the fish body. So then the uh, forest fire is also like that. So. Um, then most recently we do, this picture is famous actually. This is called sniffer for the methane, okay? To understand the methane in the, in the ground process. So I think our timing is good and you finish front side and back side. If you don't understand anything, leave it blank.
okay? Don't worry too much. Uh, we'll take uh, a three, four minutes break. Uh, we allow our next speaker to set up. So we'll come back three, four minutes, okay? So um, we finished the first hour of lecture. The next two hours, we have two speakers, one hour each. So uh, no, I hope you are going to focus and take some notes. There is also in-class uh, worksheet. Did you get a worksheet for the next lecture? Okay, good. All right, so take a break. Three minutes. Okay. Three minutes. Hey, Ariza. Ali, how are you? Thank you. Okay, I'll introduce you and uh, can you set up your files? I will. Uh, you want to use my computer or your computer? I will use my own. Okay, let me give you this. Uh, that's the HTML. Okay. HTML or this. HTML. Yeah, okay, either way. Then you need to change that. Uh, so. so, you have a full one hour. It's the source in here. It's this one. This one is, is you get, to get the menu. And then you input selection. You do. Come back again. Yeah, no, yeah. That one. Okay. okay. Then you put a fresh battery for you.